Thank you very much. Uh, good afternoon. I think uh, we have had uh, a very great sessions all, all over the day today. I really enjoyed it. Uh, I'll, I'll, I'll take a very few minutes to go through the, the topic that I'm presenting to you. Um, I'm from Ethiopia. I work for a cooperative bank of Oromia, which is the third biggest uh, private banks uh, of the country. We have uh, registered about uh, uh, close to $70 million uh, in the closed market that Ethiopia is at the moment. And we are opening up, and you are all welcome to invest and come uh, work with us. So uh, but the topic I'm, I'm, I'm going to speak on is uh, aligning leadership and culture for digital future. So when we talk about the digital future, uh, basically it is about digital transformation uh, to, uh, you know, uh, uh, at the end of the day. So uh, for the digital transformation to happen, uh, I'll try this, I don't know how, I think The green one. Oh, okay. All right. So, to talk about uh, the, the digital transform, uh, I mean, like the alignment of the leadership and culture, first of all, we have to understand uh, what does it take for us to go to the digital transformation that we, we actually are looking, looking for. So, uh, there are five. Uh, uh, change blocks for the digital transformation. So uh, these are uh, digital mindset and strategy, uh, staff uh, and uh, customer engagement, uh, culture of innovation, technology, and uh, uh, data and analytics. So these all five has to put together so that we, we get the digital transformation that we are looking for. So what does it mean for digital mindset and strategy? So for us to, to go to where we are, where we want to be in a digital uh, you know, uh, uh, transformation or what we want to give to our customers through digital means, is we have to uh, you know, have the digital mindset first, uh, understand uh, you know, th this is one of the pillars. So, and also we have to have the strategy to, to get to where we are. That is the first thing. Second thing is uh, staff and customer engagement. Uh, I think many of you, when you are presenting today and when we discussed uh, through, throughout the, uh, you know, the conference, we all uh, stressed on one point, that you know, for us to digitally transform, the main two things are uh, have data and also customers. Now, one of the things that are uh, important is customers because most of the time, we, we usually start developing products and give it to the customer and expect them to like it. But usually, we should start from the customer and understand their problems, and that is where you know, the power comes to an effective product that is, uh, can digitally transform where we are uh, you know, building our so solutions for. So the other thing is culture of innovation. We have to build a culture of innovation. I'll tell you one experience. You know, uh, when I come back from the uh, UAE environment to back to Ethiopia, uh, the two different, the, the two uh, you know uh, countries or the two financial service providers uh, domain are a bit different when it comes to technology. In the in the UAE, uh, most of the technologies are mainly you know uh, done from the internal team mostly and still depend on the uh, vendors of course but then when you come to Ethiopia or where I uh, am right now uh, it's mainly you know vendor dependent so that is usually uh, is it's important because we have to know our verticals we have to know, we have to understand it we have to keep ourselves in our lane of expertise of course but then at the end of the day we have to also have a team that can be able to 
get us to the place where we want to go uh, faster. So for that to happen, we usually have to have an internal innovation team where I actually put the two, uh, the two together. Uh, because yes, we can buy technology and uh, depend on vendors, but if we don't have the appropriate uh, innovation team to be able to help us integrate as fast as we want anytime whenever it is required, but then we, we, will have to, we, we cannot be uh, as fast as we, can, we should be. Uh, and in this digital age, uh, agility and the speed is also very important. So for that to happen, the culture of innovation and innovation team building is, is very important. So the other uh, piece of the puzzle for this uh, is also technology. It is very obvious uh, if we don't have the appropriate technology in place for the kind of services and uh, you know, products that we want to give to the customer and we, we don't have the core applications or systems that Require, that are required to give those services, uh, it is, you know, not uh, going to be working. Uh, I'll come to, you know, in the next slide, uh, it will be, you know, a little bit of more, uh, okay, how does that affect the leadership and culture at the end of the day? So at the end of the day, now for us to have digitally transformed completely, we should also have data and analytics so that we can make better decisions and also we have to see uh, how the data evolves so that we can make our products much better and better when time, you know, uh, do, through time. That's one of the things. So what, what if, you know, one of these blocks are missing? What happens? Now, for example, if uh, digital mindset and strategy is missing from the, the state, then comes you know, you will only be digitizing your product. So you have technology for automation, you have a uh, culture of innovation for integration, you have uh, staff and customer engagement to, do a, to be able to produce new products and all that, and you have data and analytics you, to understand what this is all about. But if we don't have the strategy, then you have digitized your company, but, you know, you cannot be able to uh, transform to the place where you want to go. So that is one. The other thing is, what if, if you don't have uh, staff and customer engagement into the, the, uh, this? Then comes, you know, this results in resistance. Because now you have a product, you have, uh, you know, you, you, you know, you have data and analytics, but if you don't have a lot of scale, uh, uh, and if you cannot be able to sell it with appropriate stuff, then the resistance to, to get it where you want to go is what will happen. So uh, that is one of the things. So what if we also remove culture of innovation out of the picture? Then if you do that, then incoherent projects will happen. Because yes, you have products, you have purchased uh, you know, from vendors, you, have, you, know, you know where you want to go, but if you don't have the culture of innovation, the issue is that you can't be able to scale properly, you can't be able to integrate uh, uh, well, and you don't have the appropriate skill set to be able to take you or finish your projects, then that will uh, result in incoherent projects in the picture. Now, that will also hinder you to the kind of digital transformation you are looking for. So, what about if you remove technology? Because all of these, these uh, blocks are very important for the complete digital transformation. If you remove technology, then comes frustration. Because you have all the other things in place, but you don't have the appropriate technology that in place, so you are not be able to deliver to the customers. Management will be frustrated, customers will be frustrated and that will result in frustration if you don't have this piece of the puzzle in place. Uh, if you don't have data and analytics, stagnation will happen because data and analytics will give you the picture uh, where you started, where you are right now, and where you are going, and the evolution of the product that you have, and the evolution of the customer behavior. And now that we have also AI and machine learning into place, then you will be able to predict also what the customer would probably want in the future as well. So for this, uh, 
if you don't have these, then you have the product, you have digitized technically, but you are not be able to go further than, you know, you, where you have started much, much or less. So uh, this is also very important. So uh, usually we miss this part of it. So we have all the technology, we have everything, and then we don't have this proper. Maybe we will have some dashboards to be able to tell us, you know, where, where we are in profit and things like that. But we, are, we do not have uh, the, the appropriate data and analytics and the appropriate technology to be able to tell the big data that we have accumulated through time to be able to tell us what the future looks like. So these five combinations of, you know, blocks are important for digital, digital transformation. So if you have all these in place and all together and working, then you have brighter digital future uh, guaranteed. So now these are the things that is important for us to digitally transform, for us to have a better digital future in, the, in, in front of us. Then. Uh, if that is the case, then our leadership should revolve around making sure that these components are all in place. Wherever uh, any component is missing or we think that it is a bit, you know, struggling, that is where we have to chip in as a leader. Uh, uh, so, uh, and also to be able to maintain all these, we, ha we have to create a kind of culture that should enable us to be able to, you know, deliver the kind of the digital transformation that we want uh, for the future. So uh, one of the things that I have learned from uh, uh, the World Based Bank, DBS, I have a, an opportunity to you know, discuss with uh, Robin Specular, who wrote the uh, World Based Bank book, and be able to spoke with some of the DBS team also. This is one of the banks that are very much transforming in, uh, digitally that we are learning from. So. There are a couple of things that they have done as a team to stay digital and innovate much better to be able to the most digital bank. And we are also learning from that and we are also changing accordingly. So one of the things is two in a box. So to me, to be able to make sure all those components are in place, one of the things that you have to do is two in a box, which, is, which means that business is technology and technology is business. I think you, most of you, uh, especially bankers, can relate to to this point to me, which means that in many of our projects, we usually give it to IT and digital banking and leave it there. But then it should actually be, uh, you know, two in a box where the business uh, feels like IT and IT feels like business. And if we cannot be able to speak our languages, in this kind of a, this experience, when I heard about it, they told me that, okay, you. The two will be putting, sitting together, and then in presentations, usually they present actually, the IT presents business, business presents IT, so that they are making sure that we understand each other. And I think you also relate to the fact that you remember how many kinds of pages of RFPs we usually write, you know, if, especially those of you who are coming from uh, FinTech uh, or technology. That is because we, we do not put these two together the IT is trying to guess what the requirements are and trying to get from this and that requirements. And while we are bidding for, uh, uh, you know, core banking, we usually end up, you know, core banking plus A, B, C, D product. This is because we don't have the appropriate team sitting. And even, you know, we used to do that. We, we, we have the two teams together sitting, but then, you know, I have given you my requirement, okay. Uh, at the end of uh, two, two or one month down the line, I come back, okay, where are we in the product? It's not like that. So we have to uh, come together. If we digitally, if we have to digitally transform, we have to come together in a point where we support each other, we actually work together to, di to, the, to the end of the product, actually. So the other thing is reverse mentoring. Now, one of the things that is also missing is that uh, you know, the leadership probably, you know, uh, a lot of people are seasoned and all that. And some of these uh, API and, you know, uh, open uh, banking, all these kind of discussions might not probably be as, you know, very, you, you might not be as fluent as the, tech, the techies or the uh, languages and programming that is coming, you might not be. 
But then, and you cannot also talk about that in, uh, you know, in, in different kinds of uh, meetings because, you know, that's also a bit difficult. So the reverse mentoring is a place where you sit one-to-one -one with a technology or digital banking team who are coming from business or from different areas of the, the, the organization, and you learn, uh, you know, what are all these technical jargons you guys are talking about, and how is this possible? You know, we have talked about BNPL, we have talked about, you know, data and analytics and, uh, you know, a lot of things like that. So reverse mentoring will keep the team, you know, uh, appraised or, you know, help each other understand uh, from the business perspective as well as from the technical perspective. So the other kind of culture that the, this team has also created or it is proposed is a culture of experimentation. You know, especially in banking, we usually invest in many big products and then we expect them to be perfect. But then if we don't, if we don't put, you know, we have said culture of innovation. So if we don't give, if we, if we, have, to, if we have to place culture of innovation and we don't give our, our you know, uh, team uh, culture of experimentation and uh, not to be afraid to fail, actually, then we cannot be able to spring you know, f faster to the place where we want to go. So there is also something that as a culture that we have to develop is culture of experimentation. The other thing is digital is everyone's responsibility. Ah, this is actually, I've highlighted a little bit earlier also. Uh, it's not only the technology team or the digital uh, you know, uh, digital financial services or any other department which is working technically that the digital transformation is all about. It is everybody's responsibility. It's actually, you know, as I said, from the customer experience, interviewing the customer, understanding where, what the product is all about. It doesn't start from the technology team only, it's also from the business. So be able to build the products together, design thinking, reflect, discuss. Those are the places where we have to, you know, everybody's responsibility. Earlier, my friend was also talking about even the door keep keepers should be able to speak about the product. So it is everybody's responsibility to even get it to the customer. And in the earlier also, we talked about how our, our mothers are promoting about WhatsApp. So it's everybody's uh, you know, responsibility, and it's not about the technology team also. The last but the, and the obvious is also adopting agile. You know, if we want to transform digitally, and if we want to see the future of digital the way we want, to, we want it, and it is all about uh, speed and agility. So adopting agile uh, mindset, agile uh, digital pro transformation, agile project management is very important. Because we cannot be able to, one of the things that Agile, uh, one of the things that I love about the Agile is that uh, we don't have to entirely complete the product. We start giving, give MVPs and be able to give it to the customer, uh, you know, let, let them have a feel and touch and get their feedback. And then, you know, we, we said earlier, it is all about the customer. It is the customer who actually tells us what the product should look like. And if we don't uh, be able to do and give them uh, some products in MVP formats and be able to get it back from them, get their feedbacks and build it much better and in through different iterations and bring about a, a, a very good product, then what is it all about? So uh, adoption of agility is also the main thing. So, so to align the, you know, leadership uh, in towards the future of uh, digital transformation we should be uh, we should understand what are the components of the digital transformation and leadership should be in a position to be able to enable uh, the the staff the people the, the you know uh, all the members to be to get all all those components ready and i mean uh, available and then also create the kind of culture where everybody's responsibility is uh, to get it done and to bring it down to the ground. 
and also it is, you know, most of these, these pointers that we talked about, all of these five pointers, uh, concentrated on, you know, uh, putting the appropriate team together, the resilient team together that helps each other. So that is, uh, I believe, how we can be able to create a culture of innovation, a culture of, uh, you know, this type of transformation to the future that we are looking after. It applies for every sector, for every uh, you know, kind of uh, product or environment, and it should be that way. I think uh, that is my short presentation, and uh, if you have any questions, I'll be very happy to answer them. Thank you very much. Questions? There is. Thank you. So, Yared, you used an example of uh, DBS, uh, which is a very well known bank. And I'm interested to know from your own perspective what was the thing that you saw about DBS when you visited that resonated the most with you in terms of? the digital transformation and what you think you might be able to apply in your own local bank. The one thing that stood out the most, I mean, I'm sure there are a lot of things, but the one that stood out the most. Thanks. Yeah, so one of the very interesting things that really stood out the most is that uh, one is that, uh, you know, I think there are two that are really <laughs> impressive to me. One of the things is that uh, they adopted Agile you know, mindset, and then they don't apply it only to the projects that they are implementing, but also to every department. Risk and compliance are actually doing agile, you know, work projects and everything like that. That's one of the things that really resonated and, uh, uh, you know, stayed with me. The other thing that really resonated and stayed with me is that the kind of culture of uh, uh, ecosystem or uh, the fact that they, uh, okay, welcome integration. You know, most of uh, our banking industry is known for silos, right? You know, we have some sort of product and then we develop and then we go for it, whether we use, uh, you know, a vendor or not. But then for them, they, they, uh, they use the ecosystem building mechanism. So with fintechs and with, uh, you know, other, uh, they, they avail the technology to integrate better, and then the ecosystem drives it well. Now, those are the two things that are very much really resonated. Thanks. Yes, Alex. Yeah, are there any companies within Africa or outside Africa which you can point to that you think have done it really well? This, this uh, transformation, digitization really well in your sort of experience. And if there are any within the continent, even better. Any examples? Can you, can you ask me again? I yeah, are there any examples of any companies or organizations within Africa or outside of Africa that you, in your experience that you think have done this really well, that point to a really good examples of transformation from being perhaps a little bit legacy to being forward thinking and you know, dig fully digitized. Can you think of any good examples that you can point to out of interest? Yeah, uh, I think uh, at the top of my mind, I can only, you know, one of the, the, the companies that really are doing it, you know, uh, since I'm from the banking industry, I look after all those, uh, you know, look into that uh, vertical, uh, I think. Uh, one of the examples is DBS outside of the, 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 the continent. And uh, the other one is, uh, uh, I think, uh, uh, what do you call, uh, Mashrak Bank. They have also uh, really transforming very well from a traditional bank to a new bank uh, concept. And they are doing it very smoothly uh, without, you know, affecting the previous uh, arrangement or uh, way of work and transforming into it. And it is really interesting to see that as well. I think that's it. Thank you so much. Thank you for the opportunity. I really appreciate it.